Hello, Ruby. We're doing Ruby. So Welcome back to zero interest. Ha <laughs> <laughs> So things happened that we will get to when we get to them. But for the time being, let's just do the summary and nitpick as we usually tend to do. So, when we last left our heroes, uh, they were in the middle of kind of shitty fights, and then Weiss got stabbed in a non-lethal area by a woman who had a greater threat on the field and uh, decided to pick out her instead for no adequately explained reason. And her opponent previously, that was still in good shape and could have actually stopped her, decided not to and to just kneel on the floor for no reason. Yeah. Anyways. So. <laughs> Go ahead. We start with uh, Jean running over and being all... Why? Because everybody's frozen with shock. Including even, the villains. Even the reason. bad guys, for some reason, are frozen with shock. Mercury, the assassin, is so shocked by someone getting wounded on the field. So he runs over and he's like, Why? No! Not again. I'm not going to lose somebody again. Which, okay. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Also, Ren runs over. And Nora is there. Hey, you know how they were going to fight Hazel? <laughs> nah. Do we even know whether that actually happened? Like, no. you know, before we decided to record this today, because we could have done this today or tomorrow, but we were like, we didn't see any of that fight. Like, literally none of it. For all we know, they just stood there staring at him with their weapons drawn. He was just like, okay, you, you gonna do anything? Anything? No? no? I'm gonna okay. stare at you menacingly. Stare. Oh, gosh. Stare. No, stop it. Stare. Ugh. Gee. Boy, that says it's so anime. Uh, that's so anime. The new TV show coming. Okay, but um, yeah. So they just kind of completely abandoned that fight that they were having with Hazel. Air quotes entirely necessary because we don't know whether that fight actually happened. Um, and. Hazel, because he didn't actually care about the fight, and that that was an entire waste of time, does not follow up on them at all. And Oscar, seeing that Weiss is down and Ruby is down, pushes an old man down the stairs. Yep. That's... <laughs> like... Lionheart is the headmaster of an academy, right? Of huntsmen yeah. and huntresses and everything? The stairs are his weakness. Blunt force is apparently also his weakness. From someone half of his size. And mm -hmm. an infinitesimal fraction of his training. So. Well, yeah. I, I guess the, the implication is he has a lot of aura, and aura equals power. Sort of. But it doesn't. But okay. Look. It's he's actually Austin, so he's really strong. Okay. Sure. So he gets knocked down the stairs, and Hazel's like, "The fuck are you doing, dude?" And yeah. Lionheart's like, "No, you don't understand. It's Austin." And then he's like, "Austin, Austin." Like, you know. Kakarot! Or like the guy who screams for chocolate in Spongebob. Okay. That's basically that what this is. Uh, yeah, he basically goes brawly. Sure. Yeah. And so, 
Hazel decides I'm going to stick these dust crystals in my arms. Yeah, that... I'm going to admit, they foreshadow that pretty well. I, I say foreshadow. That's a thing that, that they've said people can do, is just yeah. directly use dust. As in, I actually looked up that video recently for something entirely unrelated, but yes, that is a thing people do. Is just Yeah, they, they did mention that. Them and use dust that way. That's... So it's, it's interesting that they brought that into this now, but at the same time, Hazel went from cool guy to Broly in like two seconds. Broly in so many ways too. Because let's handle this now. Because why not? We're probably gonna end up doing yeah. things out of order anyway. So Hazel attacks Ospin. Oscar, sorry. Um. And Oscar's like, what's this guy's deal? Why does he hate you so much? And uh, one of them, I can't remember which, explains Hazel's motivation. Yeah, Ospin. Ospin explains Hazel's motivation. Oh. That Hazel is super pissed at Ospin because Hazel's sister went to Beacon, presumably, um, because she wanted to be a huntress. Yeah, just getting the terms right. Mm -hmm. And during a training mission, which is still a mission where they go out and fight Grimm, because that's been established, mm -hmm. uh, she got killed. And for that reason, Hazel decided to join up with the people that want to destroy the world. Yes. Kakarot! Like, I, I keep I keep saying that because I'm portraying his motivation as being completely pointless and nonsensical. Just like Goku Jack, cried next to him when they were yeah, babies. Because that's a joke. It, it, it was a joke then because it was such a silly thing to have as a motivation for being like the worst. And. Hazel's motivation is similarly nonsensical. Yes, a person close to him died. In training for a profession where she would have certainly died. Uh, no, more Sorry, you cut out there. Yeah, a profession in which she would have a, a high rate of mortality. Mm. And so that's Austin's fault how yeah so Oscar to be fair points out how stupid this is and says hey she knew the fucking risks this is what that profession is it is to go out and basically die so other people can live happy lives mm -hmm. I forget what Hazel's retort was but I Fairly certain it could be summed up something like this. Do you get the joke? She was a child! Or something like that. Yeah, that sounds good. So it's right. like, hey, guess what? You're fighting a child. Yeah. And also, there's Ruby who joined Beacon at 15. Which would be younger than your sister, go figure. Yeah. So, in <clears throat> order to get revenge on Ozpin, you joined up with people who were set to wipe out all life. Especially huntsmen and huntresses. Other people, just like your sister, who decided to sacrifice themselves to, to, put this in perspective, to protect others. He joined the side that actually killed his sister. Yes. Okay? That's how stupid this is. I liked that character. Mm hmm. Me too. I liked him when he did the lightning thing. That was cool too. Yep. But, uh. Can't have a good thing in the show. It doesn't exist. No. So. Aside from that, which. Oh, yeah. Uh, they have a brief scuffle. And Oscar is losing. 
and doesn't manage to convince Hazel, so Ozpin takes over and does the cool fighty stuff for a bit. There's actually really good animation with that bit. For the 20 seconds it lasts, yes. For the 20 seconds it lasts. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Cinder and friends are going to go to the vault now, because yep. sure. Cinder, Raven, and Vernal are going down into the vault, because they can. I mean, we didn't... Because everyone is completely distracted. I mean, we didn't accomplish our mission of killing Crow, which is the reason why we didn't just go down in the first place. But sure. Cinder didn't accomplish her objective of killing Ruby, even though that's why she went along with the ambushing Crow in the first place. Killing or capturing. Yeah. Remember when that was a big thing in the whole confrontation in the bandit camp? How Cinder was so gung-ho about doing that, and, uh, what's his name? Uh, Watts was like, don't be a moron, you're gonna screw everything up if you just keep pursuing this vendetta. And she's like, I'll pursue whatever I want, or something stupid like that. And as a reminder, do anything about it <laughs> afterwards. As a reminder, they could have gone down to this vault before even summoning any of these people. Yeah. They were in the room and could have just gone and done. Yep. They could have gotten the artifact, summoned them, and then used the artifact on them, for example. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so, Vernal, Raven... Uh, before, before we get down into the vault, which we're going to do, that's probably yeah. the last thing, because... It <laughs> does cut back and forth a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so... Uh, John's like, not like this, not like this, and he's got his hands over Weiss, and Ren is there saying, she's dying probably, I don't know, I'm not a fucking doctor. Um, <laughs> he's straight up just like, yeah, she's dying. It's yeah. Like... And John is, starts glowing, and Ren's like, she's stabilizing, I guess, probably. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on? I don't understand, Jean says his hands glow and Weiss's body glows. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, that goes on for a while, and eventually Ruby wakes up for reasons I forget. I don't care. Yeah. I don't uh, care. Oh, hey, by the way, anymore. Jean is Orihime now. Yeah, great. Because uh, everyone loved that character. Uh, you exist only to heal people. Mm-hmm. So Ruby goes over and is like, what the hell are you... Uh, I don't know, but she's doing better. Uh, so Ruby lifts up Sean's hands and checks the wound. Okay, it's fine. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Even though I just stopped you from doing what you're doing. Also, you can probably put your hands down now after, you know, I've taken my hands away. You can put them back down on the wound now. You don't have to keep them up here anymore. You can put them down? No? Okay, never mind. Also, the wound looks like it's healed, but whatever. Internal damage, sir. Yeah, and that's pretty much the end of the stuff up top, I think. Oh, yeah, Yang tries to interfere and stuff, but she's blocked by uh, Mercury and Emerald, who are tag-teaming. Oh, right, they're still around. And then... uh. Someone intervenes in that. I can't remember who. Probably, uh, I know. Probably. I know. Pro and uh, Ospin or Oscar were fighting against Hazel. Oh yeah, and Crow takes a hit for Oz. I'm just gonna say Oz yeah. from now on because it's too complicated otherwise. Yeah, and that happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also Down in the vault, they've completely forgotten what a semblance is, haven't they? Just yes. entirely. Yes. Are you surprised? I shouldn't be. His semblance now exists so that he can feel guilt for things he has no control over. And that's it. (sighs) 
Is it that I keep expecting better from them? I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's pretty much for that up top. So, on the lift down to the vault where the relic is supposed to be, uh, Cinder is like, hey, isn't this exciting for you? Uh, yeah, you must be name? like so happy, like Vernal. Yeah, you're like you're. So, oh man, like, if I were you, I'd, I'd be so hyped. This is like the best this is, this thing is your ever. Purpose. This is the. You are the first to do this in maybe ever. And yeah, this is this is good for you. Yeah, and Vernal's like I just do what I can for the tribe and for my family, and so he's like, oh, you got her well trained. Hmm. Yeah, it's brainwashed, yeah. We get it. <laughs> then they get to... I shouldn't put that, that was passable. <laughs> yeah, they get to the really cool-looking vault. It's actually very beautifully it done. Is, it is very nice. nice and uh, they reach the, little, the point which is like, just push your put your hand on the door and it will open, and then just go in, we get the artifact. So she does. So she's about to put her hand on the door uh, when Raven, uh, grabs her sword in the sheath. Mm -hmm. Worth mentioning. Raven, yeah. Raven gets frozen instantly, and then yep. uh, <laughs> Cinder uses her extendo arm and stretchy fingers to stab. Uh, it's, it's kind of getting ties somehow. They just keep stealing things from other anime. <laughs> High lust. So she does that, and now I will get your power, because apparently you can get two maiden powers at once, or something. I don't think even she knows. I think she's just, you know, winging it at this point. <laughs> like, it's not est and, established that that's a thing that can happen. If yeah, fact, evidence no. would point to that not happening. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. So but then she's trying she's, it. She's like, oh. "Oh, wait, what?" Ice breaks, and Raven's like, "I'm not. She's not the Spring Maiden. I am." Eyes flare up. In kind of a purpley color, and that was actually kind. Of, well, not purple, but like a reddish. Yeah. Mauve kind of thing. I don't know. Looked pretty cool. So mm -hmm. it actually looks decent when it's not just regular fire. Um. There's one quote from this exchange where it's like, "Oh, Raven, you're you, you, you're this. So much I've heard about you that you're clever and strong and you're quick-witted, oh, and it's like I'm, I I was disappointed <laughs> to find out that was all wrong. And I was like, "Me too." Yeah, yeah. I can relate <laughs> with Cinder for once. That's nice. <laughs> So, so the plot twist of here is all along, Raven was the Spring Maiden. Well, here's the thing. Not necessarily. It could be that uh, Vernal was indoctrinated into the bandit tribe thing so hard that when she died, she didn't think of a killer first. She thought of Raven. Yeah, so that could be it. It could be. But, for the sake of argument, we'll say, okay, this is a twist. Vernal was never the Spring Maiden. It was always Raven. Because, thank frankly, that makes the writing slightly better in previous episodes. Not by, not by much, but it's a slight improvement. Yeah. Like, it, it's, hmm. it recontextualizes it's... the conversation with Yang that Raven had. Because it's the thing that she wasn't saying to Yang about how manipulative Ozpin is and how he wants people to sacrifice for his game and Raven wanted nothing to do with that. She was the maiden. And that was yeah. a thing she didn't want. It was a burden she didn't want because now she is duty bound to protect an artifact that she didn't know existed, and, doesn't care, and doesn't want anything to do with. And sought after by people. Yeah. She is now a target, and she didn't want that any more than just being a regular bandit. And so, that makes more sense. It does, and it makes sense that she wouldn't tell Yang about it. So, yeah. you know what? If that's the case, and it's not the other thing that we said, because that would actually be worse, then 
I'll give them a little more credit for that particular episode. Doesn't yeah. really forgive the fact that it's still six episodes in a row of nothing but people just sitting down and talking, but and her, also her characterization like, a little better. Leo had said, you know, oh, we ha- we have we think that the maiden is in Raven's Bandit camp, which yeah, she was. Hmm. Or it was that Crow, Crow who said that. Though. Yeah, it was Crow who said that. The Raven, the like. Yeah, it was that conversation, rather, hmm. uh, where that came out. I'm so it makes me wonder if... How Crow knew. Was it ever mentioned how he found out that Raven had the Spring Maiden? I think it might have. He might have found out from Raven. I don't know. In which case, that's quite the long game, and it's going to take a little bit for me to wrap my head around and we might actually come back to this at the end of the season for this whole confusing plot pretzel that has gone on I will admit the reveal of oh yeah she was the spring maiden like if that was how it was supposed to be all along then uh, yeah sure that being said yeah the rest of the episode nope that being said, and, yeah. What exactly did it accomplish in the end? Uh, the you bruise? got a twist. You got a twist, and audiences are excited, and one character is dead. That's all it accomplished. Also, Yang is now the daughter of a maiden, and that's probably important. I guess I don't know. But now, guess what? Raven's going to be really important in the series. If they try and have her do a face turn, I am going to be very dis... No, I'm not. It's going to be part of the course. (sighs) Yeah. So, yeah. While I would like to give them all the credit in the world for, hey, they did a twist, and maybe it actually, you know, our expectations were completely led astray in the earlier parts of the season. And, you know, good on them for a twist that actually makes the writing seem better in hindsight. I don't yeah. I don't believe that that's the case. I still think it's the other thing. Because I don't trust the writer anymore to actually... There's something to be said for when uh, when you're disappointed for so long consecutively, you don't have a lot of trust in that author-reader relationship, I guess. No. And even if this turns out to be the good twist, which doesn't prove some earlier things. Good to an extent, yes. Yes. Yeah. The rest of the season so far has not been good. Uh, Yeah. So, there's there's a lot here that's been... Just this episode alone. Yeah, John Semblance is uh, healing. And entirely uninteresting. Yeah. Because... Clearly, he could have healed Pyrrha now. Pyrrha's death was, like, instant. She turned uh, to dust. So, yeah. yeah. It's pretty instant. So. <sighs> there, were, there were so many other semblances that would have fit him more from a story standpoint. I really liked the theory. Someone else did a YouTube video, and I forget who it was, because I only watched that one video of theirs, but it was a really insightful video. Um, I liked the theory that his semblance would be polarity. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it would do the opposites attract thing, because polarity, uh, 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 because Pyrrha and Jorn are pretty fucking opposite, actually, (laughs) if you think about it. 
But it would also be kind of a uh, an inheritance. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of what Jean's thing has been over the past couple of seasons, is just taking on everything that Pira did for his team and him trying to do it too. But, uh... Instead, we needed a healer, guys. So we got a healer. That's why it feels like the uh, the Orihime from Bleach thing, where Orihime at first could could deal damage and attack, but then she became just a healer that only ever healed, and that was yeah. all she was ever good for. And, and so if you don't give Jean a semblance that allows him to keep up with everyone, then you put him in the back line and he just becomes a healer. Yep. Makes it easy. <sighs> like, even Orihime, I could kind of get just for cultural overtones of it, because Japan, women don't fight, is a thing. Especially in Shonen. So, having her be a pacifist means you don't have to try and set up girl-on-girl -girl fights for her to have. Yeah. Because there were lots of fighting girls, though, in Bleach. Like mm. Rupi, Rukia, for example. And a lot of the other characters, but... Yeah. That, well, that's kind of going t tangentially yeah, that's somewhere tangential, else. Yeah. yeah, so we're... Basically, I think it's a big mistake to give Jean this semblance... If you need a character who can heal, introduce a new character. Expand your world a little. I'm not sure it's a mistake, but I would say it's not an interesting direction to take it. It doesn't well, that's add how I, that, That's why I call it a mistake. It's because it doesn't... It's a it utility move for the writing, not an interesting yeah. one. It's there to assist the writing, not complicate it. Which is... Dull. Yeah, and un uninteresting. Cause, could you imagine what John would be feeling if all of a sudden he now had polarity? Like how that would complicate his character just a little bit more? I can't, and that's... That's why it would have been so much more interesting, because I don't exactly. know where they would have taken that. Yeah. That would have been so fascinating, but they just decided, no, we need to do a basic utility thing so we can have characters get injured and we can have cliffhangers, but oh no, it's fine because John can heal them and it's fine. Yeah, like, it, it, it also, yeah, yeah it, does, it does destroy some of the stakes because now it can just heal. It's like, it's like when you have the Dragon Balls just bring back everybody. Mm-hmm fights start to lose their, their stakes. And uh, that's why you, you typically, if you're going to use a healer character, you have to be very careful with them. Because then you risk that, especially in an action-based show. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That was a completely uninteresting turn that everyone expected, literally everyone, like, even on the Rooster Teeth site, the comments are like, yeah, okay, John has healing. Everyone saw it coming. No one's surprised. No one's invested in that plot turn. We got it out of the way. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I and guess... the Raven thing, I'm just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Uh, I guess final note is we were really right at the end of season four, when we said Ren and Nora are done. Yep. Because <laughs> they get nothing. What did Nora get... do in this episode? I don't remember. Nothing. That. Less than nothing. Not even, like... It's to the point where they are characters that are currently useless in the story. Ren was literally there just to hold Weiss's hand and presumably take a pulse, I assume that's what he was trying to do? And... It's about exposition that he, even he didn't seem entirely sure of. So, in essence, he contributed nothing. If he took him out of that scene, it would not have changed a thing. Like, you could have, you could have 
made it so season four, that Grimm gets away and Ren and Nora leave the team to chase after that. And it would change nothing in this season. No. In fact, you could have done that and have them come in as a big damn heroes moment. They've taken a level in badass. They are stronger. They are more adept with their abilities. And, and they, they have lots of, kick some ass. say, combination moves and stuff that they've yeah. developed. And you just have them come in and they're able to come in and help at the last minute. But, uh, no, that that would... Hmm. We don't want to do that. Uh, Ren and Nora are just kind of We there. want them to be there so that they can be set dressing. And say stupid things sometimes. Criminally underused. So, yeah. Hmm. <sighs> two more episodes. Just two. Yeah, two. And then we can stop. I mean, I suppose technically we could repurpose the show and just riff on the show after that. Just take the piss for the entire thing. I don't know. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to do that because oh. this show used to be good. <laughs> It did, but it's no longer a show that is worth doing proper criticism for. Because there's too much. Yeah. So. <sighs> Disappointing. So, that's this episode. We got two more, and then we're done. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks Feel for watching leave. Zero Interest. Feel free to leave your dislike before you go. We know it's coming. Or if you actually liked our criticism, uh, well, good. <laughs> we're we're dead inside right now, so a little bit. Yeah, bye everybody. Yeah.